Okay. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to, uh, to thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk and to participate in this, uh, this conference and present to you my work, long, long years' work. I also wish to tell them I'm happy to be here and to see a lot of familiar faces from the uh, last conference in Japan, Tendai. So, first time. So, my name is Sloven Stankovic, I'm from Switzerland, near Lake uh, Lemon, or Geneva Lake. And experimentalist for almost 15 years, working uh, with uh, oxy hydrogen gas, and uh, this possible connection with the uh, Alienar. So, um, in this picture here, uh, well, I will tell you later what it is. <laughs> so, numerous experiments produced by uh, George Oshawa, uh, John Bockers, Robert Monty, uh, or Emmanuel Ransford have been conducted with electrical uh, discharge between two carbon rolls in deionized, deionized water. And some transmutation element was found, such as iron, chrome, cobalt, zinc, were subsequently found in the residues. I've been working with the oxy hydrogen gas <coughs> uh, for almost a decade um, and did a lot of experiments with materials such as tungsten, uh, aluminum oxide, uh, graphite. So, in this case, I will present you. Uh, some strange things, um, even nuclear transmutation with the graphite and the oxy hydrogen gas. In this setup, sorry, in this setup, you can see uh, elements uh, of, uh, of the experiment. Uh, the, the graphite rod was uh, five millimeter diameter. <coughs> was placed in the sample feeder. Here, a small picture, not see it very well, but you have a graphite here, a graphite rod, and it's pushed under the nozzle of the uh, oxy hydrogen plasma. Uh, it is uh, very accurate, you can, um, it has a, a resolution of 0 0.5 millimeters per step, so we can do the precise positioning. Uh, and the, the plasma was generated uh, with the oxy hydrogen. Uh, um, electrolyzer, and it's a big electrolyzer, it can produce uh, 1200 liter per hour uh, or 20 liter per minute. Uh, to measure all these, uh, in this experiment, we have different setup, this uh, is different uh, devices, such a uh, uh, small ocean optics uh, uh, spectrometer. Uh, we have also a uh, higher resolution spectrometer built, uh, built by myself. Uh, we have also um, a 360 degree radiation detection. Um, and they're all placed in, and he's placed uh, around the contact, the contact point here uh, between uh, uh, graphic code and oxy hydrogen plasma. Uh, we can see also in the setup uh, another device is built by myself. It's a 2D axis uh, microscope, um, but I didn't use it. Uh, no, I didn't get, I didn't use it yet uh, in the experiment. It was for the further experiments. So all these process uh, uh, control from the uh, control room, uh, the monitoring center. Uh, here, uh, the two axes. So I said the uh, two axis microscope radiation detector, high resolution spectrometer, did were designed by myself, and that's why I took me a little bit time to put all this uh, experiment in place. So, by the way, thank you, eBay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the uh, complete setup. Um, with all the elements here for the uh, for the gas, uh, uh, input gas, uh, I mean output gas, uh, input row, the uh, spectrometer, uh, monitoring center. So 
let's do the experiment. The power used for the electrolysis was uh, 26 uh, volt DC with uh, 60 to 70 amps. So the, uh, the amount of the oxy hydrogen gas was uh, about 600 liters per hour. Uh, the produced plasma was analyzed with the low resolution uh, optical spectrometer. Uh, with a range of uh, 180 to 880 nanometers, so small, uh, and the uh, slit width 25 micron. So you can see here a spectra of pigment from the uh, oxyhydrogen plasma alone, and we can see uh, uh, only the OH radicals pick uh, 307 and 309 nanometers. All the rest is black. Um, we can see a small peak here, uh, which is a sodium doublet, but it's very, very weak. And my understanding uh, with the Kevin's work, uh, work uh, could be uh, eventually potassium that is in the water, uh, the KOH. Uh, which is used as the um, electrolyte. So, maybe. So, I didn't uh, analyze the output uh, gas uh, with the uh, gas chromatography on top. So, we can see the possibility here from the uh, sodium lines can be, uh, uh, can appear maybe with the combination of the potassium and uh, oxygen. Once the plasma was applied, on the gram petrol, uh, we, I see a radical change in the matter of seconds. Uh, the strong, strong sodium line appeared, uh, also a potassium doublet here. And you can see here the uh, oxyhydrogen radicals, OH radicals just disappeared. Uh, and also you can see a really broad band around the 680 nanometers per peak. Uh, so in order to see if this is really sodium line, sodium doublet, I use my uh, high resolution spectrometer. Uh, I can adjust the uh, uh, range uh, and the uh, center of the uh, uh, measurement. So it has a four nanometer uh, range. Uh, so I can uh, really uh, uh, confirm the sodium doublet here at the 589 and 589.6 nanometers. So it is really sodium. Uh, I used the software from uh, one of the uh, guys from internet, Tom Field, uh, from our spec Astro. Uh, can use, I can use this uh, program with the optical uh, spectrometer with the camera. So in this uh, two uh, spectra, uh, spectra compared, uh, I didn't saw any atomic hydrogen, neither before nor after the applying graphite. So the disappearance of the hydroxy radicals from the spectra and the appearance from, of these strong peaks of sodium potassium, as well as the appearance of this broadband here, pushed me to think that maybe the OH radical uh, participating in creation of this sodium potassium line. All the oxygen and hydrogen just recombine uh, with carbon in order to form elements like sodium potassium. We can see that after. Uh, what is interesting in these uh, uh, graphics that there is no other uh, peaks of uh, specific element uh, that are present in the, uh, in the uh, spectra. So uh, I found in the work of uh, Dr. Cameron, uh, that was from his book Low Energy Substitution from 1964, uh, he showed that the following steps of the creation of the elements so um, the thing is that, for example, magnesium uh, or calcium 
didn't appear in the, uh, in the graphite on, on the spectra, but all the elements could be found later in the uh, results of the oxyhydrogen hydrogen treatment on the graphite. So this is the, just the setup to, uh, to extract all these uh, samples from the, the graphite. We have a microscope here, microscope, standard microscope. I have a small device I made up here for the micro manipulation of these samples and uh, camera with the computer. So these are interesting things. After the oxy hydrogen plasma treatment, the graphite surface was scratched in order to obtain this uh, powder, which was analyzed under the, uh, with two systems. Uh, the panel uh, uh, from the uh, Chapitec Switzerland and the uh, other one, older system testing from the University of Lausanne in Switzerland also. So you can see here uh, the optical uh, picture, I mean, uh, picture with the optical microscope. And uh, on the upper side, you can see the uh, SEM. All these spheres are uh, between 10 and 150 microns uh, dimension. Um, and there are, there are a lot. Uh, like, uh, I could count the 100 spheres for, for square micrometer. So there is a lot of quantity. The main components of these spheres were carbon, oxygen, aluminum, but also very high percentage of the uh, calcium, iron, and maybe a lower percentage of magnesium, sodium, and potassium. Uh, the graphite was analyzed before treatment. You can see here the result of the screening first, and then the precise measurement of different elements that I, I have found in the, uh, these uh, spheres. So I didn't ask to make, make uh, all the preci precision measurements of the, all these elements. We have um, in uh, the graphite road, uh, you can see that 99.8% about is carbon, and only 0.2% is all this. So you can see, uh, for example, the, the most, uh, the, the component that is most in, these, in, the, in the graphite was the uh, iron, 0.12%. Uh, after the um, EDX measurement for, with the both uh, systems, I made the calculations uh, of these uh, uh, elements to see the percentage of the uh, uh, elements in these spheres. And they are mostly all the same composition. The thing is that uh, after the calculation, uh, we have uh, something like between 20 and 1800 times more elements in spheres than that was in the beginning. So if you take the, in account number of the spheres per square micrometer, so you can see that the amount of created new elements is really huge. Other things that are interesting um, is the element that uh, were found in these uh, components uh, and those elements like uh, chlorine and sulfur were found that <laughs> the problem is uh, they weren't there <laughs> in the beginning. So one of the possibilities is that for uh, sulfur is the combination of two oxygen, and again, uh, the chlorine is made with sulfur and one hydrogen. So uh, there is a possibility of this uh, this reaction to give these uh, elements new elements. For the Kevin understanding, um, the impurities in the graphite brought before the treatment is important as those are considered to be a seed uh, for the creation of the same elements. Pure carbon load, free from any impurity, can be uh, or could 
give a poor result or maybe even no result. Um, and to have some results with a pure, pure carbon, you have uh, to put more energy in the, in the process. So as for the creation of synthetic diamonds, it's shown that certain proceedings need a seed for, for diamonds to be created, like the CBDs or LPHD, low pressure, high temperature growth. So uh, I think the same process, process is uh, done in this uh, experiment. One of the other elements that were found in the graphic powder was analyzed under the Raman, with the Raman spectrometry in order to determine what the, the crystal structure is. So we can see here uh, some sort of glass, and in fact it was a glass, it's a, uh, an effect glass. The, in red you can see the composition of these elements, and the other ones are just for the comparison of the an type crystal and the another type glass, and so you can see that uh, they're pretty straight, pretty uh, confirmed the, uh, the analysis. Uh, here's another funny thing: a uh, great number of these elements, like these ones, were found in the powder, uh, and these elements are composed. Uh, guess what? 100% carbon. So, um, and you see the external structure represents some facets here, here. Uh, the uh, extreme bright uh, image, you can see some multi-layer multi sheets uh, composition inside of this some sort of sphere, graphic sphere, uh, carbon sphere, sorry. Uh, and I think this is a, an early stage of this one. So it's a, a growing process. Uh, Sergei Taskev uh, analyzed from some crystals uh, formed by the meteorite dust uh, fell on the Earth on February 15, 2013, in the area of uh, Chelyabinsk in Russia. And the external structure of his findings uh, resemble really, really good with this one. As you can see, this facets also, and the same composition is 100% uh, graphite. Uh, he explained uh, and present this uh, structure as a uh, crystal or a polycrystalline variety of a cubic diamond uh, with different colors going from black to dark green. Uh, the detection of the event of strong beta and gamma radiation was performed with this uh, 360 degree uh, radiation detector. And um, it took me a time to, to do it, <laughs> especially to weld all these small components here. So uh, this model has, um, this detector has 12 modules. All modules have six detectors inside. Uh, six de detectors per, per plate, and every detector has three diodes. These are uh, silicon photodiodes. So the surface covered with this, uh, all the complete surface was like uh, uh, 270 micron, um, um, uh, square millimeters. The noise, by the background noise, was something like uh, 30 millivolts, well under the background from the environment. Radioactivity, so the uh, even there is uh, something it could normally take uh, a measurement of the radiation, but unfortunately, uh, I didn't find any radiation in this uh, process. So uh, I can sell it for someone who wants it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the last picture. I, I didn't know if I wanted to put it on the slide, but uh, someone. Let's uh, yeah, give me a uh, ask me to put it, so I put it. Uh, you can see here the LC hydrogen plasma going through uh, a wall of the uh, graphic crucible. Uh, from your place, it's like a normal flame, but uh, if you take a look a little bit inside, it's, uh, there is a strange thing happening. You can see this 
straight line inside of the plane that appears and it's uh, going from the entrance, I mean, it's not the entrance, it's uh, the size of the output, uh, almost uh, through the entire uh, length of the plane. So, uh, of course, there sure has to be done a lot of more research to see what is it, but uh, it sure is a really, really interesting thing going on. Um, I want to show you a small uh, video about the oxyhydrogen plasma uh, applied on the graphite rope. So the video is filmed with a small uh, webcam, uh, 30 image per second, and with a uh, filter to, uh, just in between to see what's going on. So I hope it's going. Yeah, why can I call it safe? One moment, please. <laughs> One moment, please. So you can see the uh, small parts going off of the carbon. And I just put a little bit more in under the plane. And what is interesting, uh, as we discussed this, this morning, there are uh, some points that appears uh, here uh, that stays uh, Right for in this case uh, it's a minute, but if you look it for normal uh, timelines uh, for 10 seconds, and they're just jumping from one place to another, but it's still very very bright. So interesting, also interesting thing. Um, you can see also small particles that are falling from this. Uh, a lot of people saying that this normal, uh, you know, uh, sublimation process uh, going with the oxyhydrogen plus on the graphite. So maybe it is, maybe don't. I'm not sure about that. I didn't measure the CO2 uh, about the uh, uh, graphite world, but there was not enough fume to to say that it was a sublimation. <coughs> so contrary to the experiment from other person like uh, Sundaris and Bokris, Ranford, Monty, Oshawa, and others. Um, I didn't use electricity to uh, make this uh, experiment. It was oxyhydrogen plasma. And one of the few theories that uh, I will discuss with uh, a few persons, uh, with, uh, one of the theories which corresponds to this is the theory of Chris Ekman, which says that the uh, electron is trapped uh, electrons are trapped inside of the so-called river cluster uh, in the linear way uh, water uh, molecule and release all these uh, electrons uh, in contact with the surface of the graphite rod. So the electrons penetrate inside the uh, crystalline structure and break it apart and that liberated the energy needed for the sintering, I would say, uh, of these uh, elements to produce other elements. You can see here the representation of uh, uh, new atoms uh, by cavern. So the next step is the, uh, the research path of the nuclear presentation. Uh, the oxyhydrogen plasma would be the following. First of the, all is the measurement of the electromagnetic uh, field and electric current generated in the plasma. Uh, eventually measuring the slow neutron radiation that there is, and uh, testing other materials and performing uh, SCM, EDX, and Raman analysis. And uh, Mr. McCuber said uh, yesterday or before, uh, we need uh, the precise uh, protocols to replicate this experiment. So I have a precise protocol here. So you get an ox a good oxyhydrogen generator, take a graphite rod, 
photograph it under the plasma, pick up the results, and enjoy the results. So uh, that's it. So please consider the possibility of ways of getting alien artifacts. Thank you. measure energy or um, I didn't have any uh, uh, calorimeter in place or I wanted to do measurements with the optical you know emissions like photons but my spectra wasn't uh, calibrated so I don't I didn't make any measurement uh, energy management okay next step <laughs> okay uh, maybe I lost something but did you did you cross check the result of elements by ICD mass? Uh, the um, ICD first, mass? Yeah, yeah, I would say. Okay, um, you know. This, um, the, the result, for example, here. Uh, on the left, these are made by the uh, analysis of University of Lausanne. They did all the measurements before. Yes. And after was also double checked with the uh, EDX measurement. I didn't do the Each mass spectra. Yes. Each of the mass. All all these spectrum, uh, all these uh, lists uh, yes. are did the twice. So uh, I'm pretty sure that the, the results are correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have many questions for you, for you but uh, the uh, main questions: What the type of the power supply uh, uh, used in your experiment? What microwave? Uh, this is the, uh, the uh, standard electrolyzer, water electrolyzer using... But plasma, what, what the generator is... Oxy hydrogen gas only. No plasma, no energy input, nothing uh, about the plasma generated by the, the gas itself. I start. Okay, okay. okay. And uh, uh, the second uh, uh, very strange uh, uh, results uh, in your optical spectrum, connected with your optical spectrum, it's because of no uh, uh, no lines, some, some, uh, lines uh, uh, from graphite. Uh, where is uh, some lines from the graphite? C two. Yeah. Uh, Correct. Uh, I will just come back to the. Uh, uh, or for example, here. Uh, no. Oxygen uh, O H I C, but uh, there are no uh, C two. I didn't throw any C two or C or on the it's other. It's very strange. It is. <laughs> the only thing what uh, it's uh, even stranger than that is the broadband. What you see here, and uh, as I discussed with someone, uh, it uh, may be uh, even stranger that don't uh, that we not see the carbon. Graph, uh, carbon lines inside. And this world balancing signifies something really strange is happening here. And interaction between the graphite and uh, uh, OH uh, jet uh, uh, will be in uh, open atmosphere or not? Open atmosphere, yeah. Whereas uh, CN? This is very strange. Very it strange. is very strange. Uh, I was. Um, uh, the thing is that um, if you have um, only uh, here, this one, this is OH radical, and that's for sure. Uh, and other lines are not present, so if there is a uh, connection between oxyhydrogen plasma with uh, uh, azot, natrium from, from air, should be lines, but there isn't. This, uh, this is picked up just at the output of the nozzle, of the, uh, uh, on the nozzle. So uh, you, you can see only these uh, gas coming out, and there is no interaction with the environment. 
Okay, I, I, I so uh, we can uh, discuss. Uh, so okay, my no last okay. question after mm -hmm. okay. your presentation. What is the temperature of this oxy hydrogen plasma? <laughs> what, is the, what is the temperature? Um, I presented in Japan three years ago. Uh, I made a measurement of the oxy hydrogen plasma, but with, no, with a non intrusive uh, technique called the Moiré deflectometry, which uh, used two plates with, the, in this case, was 200 lines uh, plates with laser. Flame, and that can give you a, reflect, a refractive index of the flame. And with that, with all the process, we can calculate the electron density of the plasma, which gives you the temperature. And the temperature was something like between 120 to 150 degrees C. Very cold. 120, 150. Mm -hmm. Very cold. Question related, and, and I don't want to challenge you. Yeah, no problem. No, it's okay. Uh, the, you know, those spherules that you produce, is it possible you melting out that material and you have, you know, higher concentration in that melting? And before that, it was before uh, below the detection limit, if you know, equally distributed in the graphite. Well, uh, uh, I'll give you the table here. Uh, come on. These, uh, all these elements before are detected and uh, smaller quantities like uh, uh, in measurement it's 0.0006%. I asked the uh, university if there is a possibility to, there is other elements, they said maybe, sure, but the, the, the uh, uh, EDS uh, uh, mass spectrometer couldn't detect them because it Quantity is too low. Uh, the thing is that we uh, measure um, the percentage of these elements in the before and after, and percentage can be applied, you know, in all different uh, dimensional spheres. And uh, you can see that there is a huge difference uh, uh, in percentage. So you cannot even there is a talk about you know concentration of these elements in one place uh, there is no uh, quantities th that much quantity of these elements and not all these elements just few of them the seven or eight elements are connected into one sphere and those spheres are like 1000 spheres in a milligram so the quantity is really really huge after we'll have to cut it off there and move on to the next speaker